Monty Chora chapter. Dear. One day you and Pama go to the Grand Bazaar. Oh, do we? All right. Let's see what's going on with Dia. Hmm. Hyman's trying to remember. What else do we put on our shopping list? Oh, what a mouth-watering smell! Paima would know the aroma of biryani anywhere. Let's go oh, get some. Oh, I was gonna say that too, but I can't remember the name. That was on our list, was it? Well, if it isn't the traveler and Dio, the I wasn't expecting then. to see you here. Uh, hello there. Oh, it's been quite a while. Dang, that takes me back, man. I was really sad. I thought I thought it was gonna be over back then. Huh. So you two are still hanging out together. Dear, didn't you say last time that you were gonna head back to the desert? <laughs> I said I was going to resign from being her bodyguard. Not that our friendship was over. <laughs> we're still the best of friends. Oh dear. The Halmayanis also still post jobs from time to time. Their pay is always generous, so me and the other mercs never pass them up. Other mercs? I told Dia to just stay at our place when she took one of those jobs a few days ago. My parents were delighted. They even said that it always felt like we were missing someone whenever Dia wasn't around. <laughs> that sounds like something they would say, all right. They're always so welcoming. <laughs> Anyway, the job is already taken care of, so I was going to head back to the brigade as soon as I finished a little shopping. But the master kept insisting, and I ended up staying for another day. And another day, another day, another day. Hello, not dead, dude, you're sad. Oh. Oh. True, can I, get the, can I get their commissions? You can stay for as many days as you want, Dia. Father hasn't even gotten around to treating you to his best dishes yet. <laughs> You know I'm not the kind of person to stay put in one place like that, my lady. Don't worry, my lady. There'll always be next time. What? She said they'll treat you to the best dishes. <laughs> and I can't believe you can still refuse that. Saw that one coming. But but wait, didn't you say last time that you would take me on a trip to the desert? Why don't you just take me with you today when you leave? Mm, I know about that one. There are so many places I still haven't visited yet. Bit dangerous. I'm sorry, my lady, but no can do. There's still a few things I need to take care of back at the brigade. Besides, the desert hasn't exactly been the most peaceful place lately. Oh, come on. Not this again. That's also what you said last time and the time before that. Well, it hasn't changed. I know. I'm sorry. Just give me some more time, and I promise I'll plan the best trip ever for you. All right, fine. To be perfectly honest, it's not that I wanted to go. It's more like I feel like something is off about you lately. Ever since yeah. you first set foot on the estate a few days ago, surely you've been acting anxious and even paranoid. She knows about her banner. She knows. She knows what they did to her. Have you been delaying our trip because you've run into some kind of trouble? N nah, are you kidding? Nah. You're worrying too much. <laughs> Would you swear on that? Friends shouldn't lie to each other, you know. I wouldn't pry any further if you're willing to swear on what you just said. But if something really is bothering you, then just tell me. You know I'll help you however I can. Mm. Oh, looks like Junior Zad was onto something. You're too perceptive, my lady. Seems I can't hide anything from you. I just thought that nothing good could come out of telling you about the messy happenings of mercenaries. Knowing too much only leads to more trouble. True. Mercenary life is a dog-eat-dog -dog world where Mora reigns supreme. Everything operates on a completely different set of rules. Razor eats razor. That doesn't change anything about what I just said, though. We're still friends, and I can only support you if I understand what's bothering you. My lady, you're not going to stop until you drag it out of me, are you? All right, I'll share what I know. Let's uh -oh. go somewhere else first. This isn't exactly the best place for a discussion. 
Everyone's everywhere. Okay. Let's talk here. Just try not to draw any extra attention. Yeah, Paimon. As you may already know, the Aramites have both a lot of mercenaries and a complex organizational structure. Many mercs are no different than me. Just going around looking for jobs to earn some mora. Sounds sounds about right. Uh, oh no, she's not actually. I gotta put her in there. My brigade is called the Blazing Beasts. We're not a large group, but every member is loyal and brave. The Blazing Beasts. However, not all Aramite brigades are like mine. Some are willing to cross all kinds of lines for the sake of Mora. The most notorious is a faction known as Deshret's Relics. Deshret's Relics? Judging from the name, they must really look up to... Well, either or, yeah. King Deshret. Yep, you got it. I've heard that you've already crossed paths with Ain al Akmar. They're one of the groups under the Relic's banner. She met, she, uh... Pronounce that real clean. The relics. Oh, you mean the group that tried to sell us the divine knowledge capsule? Yeah, they weren't friendly at all. Deshret's relics is composed of many smaller brigades like Ain al Akmar. The relics headquarters issues orders to all brigades under his control. On any other day, I would want nothing to do with them. Unfortunately, though, the brigade that's stirring up trouble now is none other than Dakan al Akmar. Oh. The con? Uh, I think it means beard or something. <laughs> Believe me, it's a really stupid name. I found it wow. insufferable for years. Anyway, the real issue is that Dakan al Akmar is led by my father, Kusela. Kusela? Oh. Say what now? Ooh, that's a, that is not a good scenario you are in. Yeah. I think I'm starting to understand your anxiety now. But what did they do? Quick question. Do you care for your father? I won't go into details, my lady. But they've been involved in a lot of violent incidents. We're talking hundreds. Hundreds? Yep. The scenes tend to be quite gruesome, too. They strip the victims of all their valuables before murdering them. Jeez. Ugh. Kids game, by the way. Not only have they targeted merchant caravans and ordinary citizens, but other mercenary brigades as well. That's beyond terrible. They won't even spare their own kind. Nope. I don't know how Deshret's relic sees it. All I do know is that Dakan al Akmar has become more and more aggressive over the last few years. If I don't do something about them, then even my brigade or the people of Aru village could become their next target. Poor dear. I just wish I knew what's driven him to do this. Yeah. How can your father do such terrible things? And how does... How, how, what, what kind of contrast is this? You have a dear, the most, like, uplifting... Like, just nicest sort of character, but within this kind of field, and you have her father. I don't know. People change. He's always been pretty pathetic. But at least in the past, there were still a few lines that he wouldn't cross. That's setting the bar pretty low. I mean, if he was even remotely decent, then why would I have to leave the brigade and cut all ties with him? True. He was loud and foolish, with no real sense of purpose. Instead of doing anything useful, he spent most of his time drinking and chasing after women. Of course, the other brigade members were just like him. Their ruckus would go on night after night. Ugh. Sounds like a nightmare. What about your mother? Did she ever step in to stop them? I guess Dan never did mention this, huh? Unfortunately, I never knew my mother. Oh, dang, man. What the heck? Uh, oh, um, I'm sorry, Dia. I, I didn't know. She didn't tell us anything. Oh, it's more useful than what I do, at least. It's all right, my lady. That's pretty common in mercenary circles. Didn't I mention that my father was chasing after women? I was the result of one of those encounters with some random person. Oh, I was, you know what? I know I was just thinking that too for a second. If she's saying what I think she's saying, I could be wrong. He told me that he wasn't sure who my mother was. Oh, okay. And in any case, she never came to see me. 
God. And he probably never came to see her either. He'd say, you'll be fine as long as you remember to stick with Dad. But even then, he left most of the parenting to the brigade. The one thing I do remember is that he used to tell me stories. Well, Dia's dad was out here in the cafe. But the problem was that he had terrible taste. He only knew a few stories, and even those tended to be pretty stale. They were tales of desert warriors defeating dragons in the forest, or stories of mercenaries rescuing princesses from rebel armies. Sounds like your typical fairy tales. More or less, mm -hmm. yeah. They were interesting maybe the first or second time around, but after about 20 repeats, <laughs> they started to get a little dull. God, that's terrible. He seemed to think those stories were the best things ever, though. He was so into them that he'd call the whole brigade over and make them perform the whole thing as a play. Even the toys he gave me would all be story props. I'd get helmets, shields, and toy swords. It was only much later when I realized that the shows were more for him than they ever were for me. She still has that toy sword. It's called the Great Sword. What an interesting guy. Doesn't sound like he had all bad intentions. Eh, yeah, I mean, the damage is already done. Yeah, I've always found him pretty childish. But that was something I could just shrug off. I had no reason to despise him. Until I grew up and learned the true face of Deshret's relics for myself. Looting, blackmail, violence, and fraud. They not only accepted such heinous acts, they would even openly boast about them. That's when you know it's all messed up. Princess Vashil. <gasps> no one in the brigade was any kind of hero. Instead, my father and his cronies were more like the bad guys that needed to be taken down. Cronies, huh? Did they really think that as long as they didn't do any of that stuff right in front of me, I would never know? I think I can understand your feelings. The difference between perception and reality must have hit hard. Yeah, but don't worry, my lady. It's all water under the bridge to me now. I had a no, huge argument not. with my father and left that place behind for good. Oh. Not kiss. It's a DS damage joke here. Uh. I'm not investigating them due to any bitter feelings I still have towards my father. I just want to protect those that are close to me. Hmm. You just want to find out why they suddenly started causing so much trouble? Oh, did they suddenly or did they always? It seemed like they always were. I guess before the, after the stories. Yeah. I told the boys to gather as much information as they could. Most of the reports concern violent incidents. But there's also some talk of smuggling. I see. Uh, but isn't this investigation incredibly dangerous? Mm, seems like it. It is. But every mercenary lives life on the edge. It's a lifestyle that I enjoy. That may be true. But it'll be impossible for those who care about you not to worry. Well, now you get why I didn't want to share any of this with you. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a lot on your plate, though. But I, I guess it really didn't bother her. I mean, Dia was always kind of, like, chipper and, you know, happy all the time. But, yeah, that's a hard pill to swallow. But I, I think it's probably better if you just never knew your mother rather than, like, knowing her and then her leaving. I guess. But you're pretty much just on your own now. What should we do? They both have valid concerns. I'll go back to the desert with Dia. Huh? But there's no need for you to get caught up in this mess, too. No, I have to. Story quest. Well, she's super tough, so if she went into the desert with you, then my mom bets the problem will be solved in no time. <sighs> I'm inclined to agree. I'd feel a lot more at ease if you took her along to help. You can count on me. I'll do my best. I'll wait for news from you in the city until then. Please. Stay safe. Hmm. I'm honored that you care so much for me, my lady. <laughs> All right, then let's get moving. Our first stop will be Caravan Rebot, where we can catch up a bit with my fellow Mercs. Are they your fellow Mercs? Are they? Lion's blood. 
Please be careful. I'll stay in the city and wait for news from you. Just don't do anything reckless, all right? Oh, well, no promises. I sure hope they'll be okay. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> Dinny's ass looking kind of terrified. Hey, Dia, you're back. Are these two friends of yours? Yes, sir. Blazing Beast member. I trust Dia with my life. Oh, <laughs> so you've already become like one of us then. <laughs> oh, this guy's outfit. Uh, well, that's good to know. Anyway, uh, since we've got a newcomer, let me fill you in on what the Khan Al akmar has been up to lately. The Khan. They've become extremely aggressive. Apparently, even their own now have become acceptable targets. They even attack other relics brigades, just the same as any other mercenary brigade. Why do they have to do this to the uh, man? Every time I see her, I'm just, just like, come on. Even the most ferocious beasts still protect their own. And it sounds like they've thrown that straight to the wind. <sighs> That's right. Once they've collected enough loot off the other mercenaries, they sell it off to a different brigade or, or turn the merchants on the black market. A portion of their profits is immediately exchanged for more food and weaponry to be used in their next violent operation. Hmm, just passing that along, huh? That's terrible! Yeah, and it really makes you wonder why they're so desperate for Mora. A few days ago, Isham and I trailed them for a while and even disguised ourselves as merchants to conduct trade with them. We were able to learn a few things from the exchange. Rather than saying they're out to plunder and hoard Mora, it'd probably be more accurate to say that they're experiencing an internal power struggle. Wait, a power struggle? <laughs> you heard me right. The vast majority of their victims are mercenaries from the other brigades of Deshret's relics. If their only goal was Mora, they could have gone after anybody. The targeted nature of their attacks points to a power struggle between the different brigades within the relics. That's the only plausible explanation we have. I'm almost gonna with the here. Power struggle. So like kind of like a faction versus faction. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find out anything more specific. It seems they're also trying to keep things under wraps. Oh, one last thing we discovered was that over the past few years, as the Khan al Ahmar became more and more active, Deshret's relics as a whole became a lot weaker. Honestly, we could just call Elon to handle all this stuff. <laughs> They'd be able to cause so much damage. That's how that's or that's somehow that somehow makes even things even more confusing. Hmm. Sounds mighty strange to me too. Harun, you can leave the rest of the investigation to us. Gotta say, though, I didn't expect you to go on a whole undercover mission during the few days I was gone. Sounds like you were really putting your necks on the line, no? Nah, it was nothing. We're just as concerned about the situation as you are. The Khan al Ahmar is your father's crew, after all. <laughs> what he said. Besides, Dia, haven't you done more dangerous things than all of us combined? What Question you mark? Did is nothing compared to your experiences. Yeah. Oh. And while they went to talk with Dakan al Akmar, I took a look at the last camp they attacked. Any survivors of the attack were already long gone. There was nothing of value left in the camp. Ah, Hisham and Kalaf. You're here too. Kalaf. We rushed over as soon as we saw you come into Caravan Rebot. Did you, though? Although this new friend of yours looks a little green behind the ears, I'm sensing a special vibe from her. What was that supposed to mean? Now that we know you'll have a capable partner with you, we can also rest easy. Hey, what about Paimon? Feel anything special? Aware. Oh, uh, you're also planning to tag along with them? <laughs> of course! Paimon is the traveler's most important guide. Wherever she goes, Paimon will follow. Oh, in that case, then you'd better take care of her too, Dia. Dang. Nah, he's right. He's right. <laughs> Don't worry about her. She may look tiny and helpless. She's been through <laughs> just as many battles as the Traveler here. Emotional battles. Even if she had only survived on sheer luck, then that alone would still make her quite formidable. <laughs> well, sorry. Uh, might be the denture element. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh. I guess I shouldn't judge by appearances. <laughs> 
No. Oh, one You're other good. thing, Dia. When you're free, why don't you update the deputy about your upcoming schedule? We held another recruitment event a few days ago, but everyone only came to see the flame main. You weren't around at the time, so people were pretty disappointed to only find our crew of rough, unkempt guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. The deputy put Sash. a lot of effort into the event, but it was basically for nothing. Only a few people chose to stay, and that really got to him. Ah, uh, sorry to hear that. I'll be sure to bring him some great liquor next time. I left in a hurry, and I couldn't make it back in time for the event. Where'd you go? Gotta admit, I can understand their disappointment, though. You're our brigade's main selling point, after all. Now, if only the deputy could figure out a way to bring a few more smoking hot members into our ranks. <laughs> Whoa. I shit. <laughs> Keep dreaming. Remember the last time I invited a couple gals into the brigade? You all just froze up with your mouths gaping like a bunch of <laughs> scarecrows. Rip. The awkward silence and weird expressions left quite the impression on them. They were originally interested in joining us, but after that, they both told me they were too uncomfortable to stick around. Well, it's probably for the best, because if they join this crew, we'll get another DS scenario. Hey, didn't we agree to never bring that up again? You guys screwed it up. Huh? Wait, are you serious? Why have I never heard about this? So I didn't get any more air mites. <laughs> I don't think you were part of the brigade yet. Are you kidding me? I missed a once in a lifetime moment like that and you weren't even gonna tell me? <laughs> all right, all right. We can tell you about it later. Now's not the time. Hey, don't you try to change the subject. You and Hisham get your butts over here and tell me Hisham. everything right now. <laughs> uh, are they always like this? Some mercenaries. <laughs> More or less. There aren't many rules or graces when it comes to mercenaries. We're used to just speaking our minds. If someone starts getting under your skin, you just yell right back at them. And if that doesn't put an end to it, eh, then you just challenge them to a fight. Oh gosh, the mean face. It's a new one. But we also don't tend to take many things too seriously. Oh, shoot. Being direct and getting it all out of your system as soon <laughs> as things come up is better than keeping everything bottled up, never talking about it. That's a funny little clip right there, actually. A little cool animation. That's also why I never spare their feelings when I talk to them. If I want to laugh, I'll laugh. If I'm angry, then I'll unload on them. It's hard to stop once you get used to it. Though, I can never do that when I'm with the Homoyanis. <clears throat> hey, knuckleheads! <laughs> can you at least tell me the rest of the intel before you go back to your bickering? <laughs> yeah, you hear her, Holoff? Told you we gotta focus on the investigation first. <laughs> I drew up a map. Right here is the spot. There you'll find the merchant caravan responsible for getting rid of Dukan al Akhmar's looted goods. All you gotta do is wait and ambush them in the evening. They'll have no idea what hit them. They'll oh, have no idea. Idea. Perfect. Thanks for that. Be sure to pass my regards to everyone else in the brigade as well. Will do. You stay safe, Dia. <laughs> now, like I said, the two ladies Dia brought with her were also like supermercs. I'm talking same level as Flame Mane here. Oh, well, of course we don't get to see them. Oh, you should have seen it. The aura of the two of them when they were standing together, it, it was incredible. I was just at a loss for words, that's all. Ah, oh, so pathetic. Hey! Shut up! I damn you, Huron. Come on, you can only trash us like this because you weren't there. Admit it, you would have just frozen up like everyone else if you were there. How could I have missed a moment like that? Sad, that's what I'm saying. How? And why? This should be the place. Let's find a spot to hide and bide our time. Probably just because it's gonna come down to a fight one way or another. So let's all be careful. No need to worry. She knows her way around a fight. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. 
What I meant is that we probably shouldn't go too hard on the enemy. After all, we still need to get information out of them. True. Don't take them out. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The stars look real blurry. Ah, here they come. The eyes aren't glowing. Guess I guess they would be frozen up. Let's not give them a chance to react and end this quickly. Intercept the caravan and research. I said a stroke. Intercept the caravan and search for the clues. It's like an insta fight. That's why the sky is fake, anyways. Sure. Wait, they took my D away. Well, I guess this is better then. They gave me level 90 and they gave me level 90 beacon. You know what? It's actually not that bad for Dia. <laughs> actually, well, the four piece is kind of eh. But not too bad. And C3. Nice. Okay, that's actually good damage. 5,000. I'm not gonna be able to do my burst. Just realized that. Oh, I wanted to fight some more. Sata. You're the flame main. <laughs> Looks so wholesome. Good. That saves me an introduction. All right. Time for a little talk. Are you buddies with Dakana Lakmar now? Tell me, what are they after? Tell me. <laughs> you know the code of being a mercenary just like everyone else. The first rule is to never divulge key information about our employer. What makes you think I'd talk? What's the first rule of Fight Club? Don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> that might have worked on an amateur, but I know you're just looking to protect your reputation. Think about it, though. What's your reputation worth if you won't have the other tools you need to succeed in this line of work? Tools like, I don't know, your limbs or eyes? Oh, shoot. Dang. You've got five seconds. You might want to think twice about how much your employer's information is worth to you. Whoa! I'm on. She knows what she's doing. I'm not joking around. We can do this the easy way or the painful way. No, it's the hard way. Two seconds. I'll save you the trouble. What do you do? Did he just take himself huh? out? Are you crazy? He tried to bite off his own tongue. Quick, search the area for any first aid supplies. Oh, shoot. Well, I wasn't anticipating that one. Thought he was gonna say like, you know, I'll tell you or something like that. I do just freaking all right, yeah. What the heck? Definitely didn't expect him to go that far. Thankfully the wound wasn't too deep, and he just passed out from the pain. Oh, I just freaking ended himself. But why would he be so extreme? Cause fight club. I just wanted to test his metal. You can get a lot of mercenaries to talk just by threatening them. I didn't expect him to be willing to go through so much pain just to deny us some intel. Maybe we should have kept some other people alive, too. Well, he's out cold for now. We could wait for him to wake up, but maybe it's not a good idea to interrogate him any further. What should we do? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. It'll be a waste of time to interrogate him again after that. He might just hurt himself again if we start asking. He just wakes back up we're like... Yeah, we're still here, so tell us. Still waiting. There are lots of goods around here. Let's search the area. Maybe we'll be able to find something. Good grief. She killed someone with only her word. <laughs> uh, employer. Well, I'm just gonna, gonna hire someone else, actually. 
I'm really sorry. She apologizing to him? Satar, Satar, no. Oh, I was gonna say what? Dej. Satar is not gravely injured and probably wake up soon. We'll just be. It'll be okay to leave him here for a little while. Dang. Hold on, we gotta take a picture of the <laughs> take a picture of the crime scene. Who who, who could have done this? Who could it have been? It doesn't really look like she did it, but I guess I'm biting. I guess I'm biting his tongue is more dangerous. <laughs> oh, what damage it is all? I'll put it on Akasha Graham. Oh my god, that's a good one. Be a good old Akasha Graham. There are some weapons in the boxes as well as a bunch of medicine and bandages. It's like Dakan Al Akmar is really up to no good. No bueno. There are, of, there are a lot of daily necessities like food and water in the boxes. Doesn't seem like anything noteworthy. And the goods. We found a piece of paper with a bunch of names on it. Maybe it's a record of something. It's just like dead in the background. Let me take a look. If this really is a merchant caravan, they should have a record of their transactions. Hmm. Yep. I see an entry for Dakana Lakmar right here. Kusela, Idrisi, Bashar, and Decreedy. Decreedy. All familiar names. Dakana Lakmar has been trading for a hefty supply of food, weapons, and medicine. It seems that in the past, they used to receive some canned knowledge as well. No, uh, not this again. Oh, no. Also, want to point out she actually had the piece of paper in her hand, which which is very interesting because usually they don't actually have anything in their hand. This caravan is just one link in their logistics chain. Once in the rainforest, the caravan will exchange the looted goods for Mora, and the funds will then be passed to a specific person. I knew this would happen. That person will then pack the caravan full of necessary goods, which will then be brought right back to Dakana Lakmar. Like a sumter beast. Wait, why is there no more of value recorded for the final transaction? Hmm? No value? <laughs> I want to say something else, but... <laughs> no maidens? No value? Yeah, every transaction before the last one was marked with an exact amount of mora, but the final one, where they paid for everything to be brought back to the desert was simply marked as delivered. Oh, so it's an Amazon package. Maybe the more or maybe the more amounts uh maybe the more amounts just happen to cancel out each other. No. Oh god no. Hmm, perhaps. But they couldn't have known how much they would make off selling the loot. Do they not care about profit margins at all? Anyway, the next part's the records of the goods themselves. There are a lot of entries. Everything was probably sourced from the rainforest. So it's Amazon Prime. Huh? What's wrong? Shazaman Homayani? Oh, shoot. You know when you hear that music. <laughs> Uh-oh. Someone from the Homayani family. Which one? Homayani? You mean Junior Dad's family? No. Uh, could, could it just be another family with the same last name? Surely. Mm, I'd be surprised to find someone with the exact same first and last name. Shazaman Homayani is Dunyar Zad's father and the head of the Homayani family. Oh, he's the head? Oh, God. Why is he always the father? Just what the heck is going on here? Calm down. Let's analyze the situation first. You know, maybe he just... You know, maybe, maybe it was one transaction. It's one Amazon Prime package. I'm sorry. You're right. I'll consider what we found and not jump to conclusions just yet. But what this piece of paper confirms is that the Homiyani family has been providing goods to Dakana Lakmar. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. Oh, that is really bad then. Okay. 
I thought it was like they were getting stuff from them. Oh wait, yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not ideal. <laughs> How many you mean? Yeah, the bow. It's pretty close. Whoa, Paimon, that was actually a very good uh, suggestion. My reaction was actually towards her pronunciation of the last word, but... That's a possibility, but if that was the case, why is this caravan specifically named Shazaman as their person of contact? Shazaman. They could have just as easily bought goods such as food and medicine directly from Caravan Rebot or Port Ormos. Hmm music put the vodka down bro vodka if uh let's say shazam if shazaman, shazaman uh, were actually aware of this and perhaps he would be supplying the brigade's operations this entire time yeah funding violence and looting the brigade gets the goods and he is paid the proceeds from the sale of the loot dang so is that why they're so rich But maybe this is where that money comes from. I honestly have no idea. I've been to their estate many times, and I've never noticed anything suspicious. I think Paimon's kind of on to something now. Maybe he doesn't actually know that he's doing this. The only potentially large expenditure I could think of would be the treatment cost for Dunyarzad's Elazar. Maybe they borrowed a lot of Mora in the past? But that's still just a speculation. I don't think the master would stoop so low to make Mora. I don't think Dino Zen knows anything about this either. Oh, yeah, definitely not. You're probably right. I know my lady's personality, and she wouldn't deliberately keep something like this from us. Unless she would. But what should we do now? All we found is just another mystery. If we want to get to the bottom of this, we won't be able to turn back. Mm. If you ask me, we already have no choice but to confront her about this. Uh oh. I'm not worried. It's too early to make a verdict yet. I still have faith in the Homayanis. Let's go find my lady again. We'll tell her everything and see if she's willing to lend us her support. I have a strong if feeling. We're lucky, we can not only figure out the mystery of this paper, but also follow the trail of breadcrumbs to the people responsible at Dakan Alakmar. Decision? What if instead of getting the help we need, we just end up revealing everything we've discovered to the enemy? Have a strong feeling uh Dunya's dad's not gonna be there. Palmon's actually coming in clutch with these suggestions. I've considered that possibility. But even still, I want to tell her what we found. I think I owe her that much. True friendship is built on trust. She showed genuine concern for me when we first brought up the topic. I can't repay her kindness with doubt and suspicion. <laughs> That's not how I deal with people. Well, you were going to, just now. You're right. Paimon wants to trust Dunyar's odd too. I hope we'll be able to help. Or I hope we'll be of help to her. Yeah. Let's pay another visit to Sumeru City. God, she's gonna be gone. She's gonna be gone. Oh, I can't read this? Oh. She's not gonna be there, is she? God, imagine if Dunyar's ad is like... That'd be like the biggest betrayal ever. After all we've been through. Okay, at least she's there. No! We're back, my lady. Oh, you're back a lot sooner than I expected. You mustn't have run into any trouble then. Well, how did it go? Uh, what did you come up with? Well... Actually, we are still investigating. It's just that we've discovered something strange. I see. The clues you found have led you back here, in the city? Dunyar's adds the mastermind. Something like that, yeah. You all look a little dispirited. Whatever you found must not have been very encouraging after all. Yeah, yeah, Dunyar's ad. 
Tell me. Why don't you discuss it with me? Maybe I'll be able to say something to cheer you up? It's okay, my lady. It's not so much about me being upset with my father or anything like that. Uh, how should I put this? It's your father. So something is wrong. Even the Traveler and Paimon have been uncharacteristically quiet. Okay. The Traveler is not uncharacteristically quiet. That is absolutely the norm. On any other day, Paimon would have already waved to me with a smile and shouted, Dunyarzad, we're back! True. So tell me, what happened? Uncharacteristically quiet. Uh, well? My lady, please prepare yourself for what we're going to tell you next. It concerns the Master. You know, Traveler always can never stop talking. The Master? You mean my father? Okay, I understand. Don't worry about me. I'll listen as attentively as I can. Do you explain the results? My father has been supplying goods to Dakan al Akmar? Yeah. It makes as little sense to us as it does to you. I've never doubted the Master's integrity, so I'm having a real hard time rationalizing how he could ever support an infamous brigade like them. <laughs> I'm pregnant. <laughs> Finally, the Traveler actually shut up. Finally. If only. Maybe he's not actually aware of the full story and just stumbled into the deal by accident. Surely. Now, when you say that, that sounds unlikely. Yeah, true. Now, nah, my father was just helping. It was all my idea. I can't help but agree with the traveler. Huh? You mean you feel the same way, Dunyarzad? Oh, what you just said. Okay. Thank you for sharing all this information with me. Since you've told me everything you know, I should also tell you about some doubts that... I've been harboring for quite a while. Uh oh. In the past, I thought that my father hired a bodyguard for me so that I wouldn't run away and get lost. However, there are plenty of capable mercenaries in the core of 30. Why did my father go out of his way to hire Dia? Oh, because he knew. Uh, about that. Well, the Homayanis really needed bodyguards, so they reached out to the Blazing Beasts. Later, the master told me that I was one of the best mercenaries he'd ever seen, and that I should stick <laughs> around to become one of his bodyguards. I guess he I guess he didn't mean in terms of strength, but... He offered me a pile of mora, so I just signed in on. In terms of looks. Well, but that didn't really answer my question. Just think about it. Why did my father specifically reach out to the Blazing Beasts? Uh, maybe the core of 30 just didn't have anyone available, or maybe someone recommended us. I've never given it too much thought. I think I get what you're saying. You'd think none of this was a coincidence. Uh, zoom in. Precisely. At first glance, nothing seems strange or out of place. But there are many parts of the story that don't actually make any sense. This is a really interesting quest so far. If my father had always been in contact with the Khan al Akmar, then it would make sense for him to bring Dia into her house. You mean the goal all along was to get Dia to be your bodyguard? No, 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 that's too much of a stretch. I cut all ties with my father a long time ago. He has no control over my life anymore. You say that. But... but that still doesn't rule out the possibility that your father has still been trying to influence your life without you knowing. I mean, he already got you to be an Aramite and a bodyguard. Unless he wouldn't do that anyways. Hmm. Got Dia the best moment because I was... Or he got Dia because at the moment I was the best... Oh, the best idea. So the master was not likely an innocent victim in all of this? <laughs> There's so many idea lines so far. <laughs> That's what things are looking like at this point. Nah, I think he was. Sorry we put all this on you so suddenly, Dunyarzad. It's okay, Paimon. I should actually be thanking you. 
Regardless of his reasons, if my father has truly been funding a violent group of mercenaries, then it's my duty to bring him back to reason. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really add up. Because now she just said that he's... Her father's funding them. Like, he's not even getting money out of the Aramites, so... That is backwards, I don't know. But is that really the right thing to do? My father has committed many atrocities and deserves all the punishment that he has coming to him. I have zero sympathy for him. You may call me an ungrateful child, but my feelings will remain the same. However, the Homayani family has treated me with nothing but generosity and kindness. <laughs> Should have picked up Jet instead. Guaranteed protected, actually, yeah. If we decide to investigate this further, we could end up implicating the entire Homayani family. I would be biting the hand that's fed me over all these years. I mean, it's not your fault, though. It'd be good for them to know what's going on. Dia. It's our idea. If anyone were to ask, you could always just say that I'm the one who instructed you to get to the bottom of this. You don't have to do that, my lady. I'm not conflicted because I'm afraid of taking responsibility. Besides, you're the one we should all be worried about right now. I mean, we need to figure out, uh, get to the bottom of it ourselves without talking to the family. That's what we need to do. Hey, it's still too early to give up hope. Uh, what was that thing about friendship again? True friendship is built on trust. And daily commissions and resin usage. Right, yeah, trust. You said that yourself, Thea. Teapot. If your trust hasn't been misplaced, then he probably has many conflicting feelings as well. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I guess I should always remember the trust that I've placed in people. As a mercenary, though, eh. In which case, my lady, could you ask the master to come out and have a chat with us? No! Sure thing. I also hope he'll be able to give us a logical explanation. Let's meet at the usual place then. Uh, usual place? Oh, right. No, I feel like we should try and figure it out on our own without asking the family because then we're gonna kind of drag them into it. I mean, they're, they're already into it, but like, yeah, I guess. Thank you for coming, sir. Please allow me to introduce these two. This is the Traveler, and next to her is her travel companion, Paimon. Ah, yes. My daughter has mentioned them from time to time. It's a privilege to finally meet them in person. Oh, you don't? You look kind of sketchy already. But we may skip all the pleasantries for now. What is the important matter you wish to discuss with me today? Yes, the classic bad guy NPC look. Well, we wanted to bring this transaction record to your attention. There's something on this record that we're all pretty curious about. She shows him. So that's what you found. Huh. Seems like I can't keep everything from you much longer. What? Not just anyone in the it could be Tutorial in disguise. True. After that, that last quest we had, I was a hell of a disguise. Also, Whopper Flower in disguise. Yeah, true. If you wouldn't mind, we'd like an explanation. Well, it's a long and difficult story. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. What I do know, though, dear, is that the truth will bring you no solace. If anything, it will likely cause you a great amount of anguish. Wait, me? Yes, I understand perfectly why you came to see me. And I am touched by your collective commitment to do the right thing. But knowledge always comes at a price. And sometimes, as they say, ignorance is bliss. What the hell did you do? Your father, Kusela, and I both believed that. Of course, you have the right to seek and learn the truth, but I must warn you. The facts of this matter may reduce everything you've built for yourself into sand 
blowing in the wind. What did you do? If you must proceed, then Kusela's heartfelt efforts will also fade into the wind like a fleeting mirage. His heartfelt efforts? I, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not sure I follow. I've made it this far in life without a single drop of my father's support. I, I have my own ideals and ways of looking at the world, as well as people and causes that I've chosen to cherish and fight for. None of these things have anything to do with him. You say that. I came here today to support you as the head of the Homayani family. No warning will change my stance on that. Oh boy. I understand. Then let me tell you a little story. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Tories and Simru, uh, and Upper Flowers and Moss. <laughs> oh. Our family once needed to take a trip to the desert when Dunyazad was just a baby. Along the way, we were attacked by bandits. Oh no. They had superior numbers and quickly overpowered our bodyguards. When all seemed lost, a group of passerby Aramites lent us their support. Those Aramites were Kusela's brigade, Dekan al Ahmar. So Dia's father's brigade. Kusela's men told me that the attackers were Aramite mercenaries, just like themselves. I was shocked. Why would Dekan al Ahmar go so far to save us and not spare the fellow Aramites? Has he been supplying them ever since Dunizar was a baby? Kusela was grinning and walked over to play with baby Dunyazad. She was startled by his unfamiliar face and nearly started crying. Really? I... I never knew. He said that he had no particular reason to help us. He just took pity on us because he had a daughter about the same age. Oh. And it was Dia. Was it really at the same time? We started talking about our children and... I sensed that he was a devoted father. To repay his kindness, I hired his brigade to help out at our estate for a time and offered everyone generous remuneration. So that's what happened. So Dia was also a baby, Dunyazad was also a baby at the same time when this happened. Dunyazad's dad, or Dia's dad's brigade protected them. Then they struck a deal afterwards? It was many years before I saw him again. I almost didn't recognize him the next time he came knocking on my door. The man I knew to be strong and healthy had been reduced to a, a shell of a himself. He couldn't even walk anymore without his cane. Dang. So what happened to him? He was perfectly fine when I left the brigade. I'm not too sure myself. The only thing that didn't change was his cheery disposition. He said there was absolutely nothing to worry about and that he had gotten into a fight. That was all. Dia does realize she left the brigade like a long time ago, right? He then suddenly asked me if Dunyarzad, now that she had grown, would need a bodyguard of her own. At the time, Dunyarzad was going through a particularly severe bout of her Elazar. There was no need for her to have a bodyguard when she could barely leave the house. True. But he kept coming back to the topic. Come on, it, it never hurts to be safe. How do you know a bodyguard won't come in handy one day? I was completely lost at first, until he recommended the Blazing Beasts, and in particular, a mercenary named Dia. So he was the one who recommended Dia to you. So I wonder if he remembered. I mean, he must have. Indeed. He didn't say it out loud, but it was clear that he saw Deshret's relics as an evil group who would eventually corrupt every member in their ranks. Oh. He was already beyond redemption, but he hoped that he would be able to detach his daughter from the vicious world of mercenary life. So... If Dia could stay in my house and keep working as a bodyguard, then gradually her affinity for the desert would decrease and she'd be able to leave her previous life behind. So her father wanted to be wanted her to be like a house bodyguard? 
Not necessarily like a bodyguard bodyguard. And that's why you offered her such generous compensation? Yes, but not just because of that. From the moment that he asked me for that favor, I also began to see Dia as my own daughter. What? And that's also why I tried to persuade you to stay when you asked for permission to leave. I was willing to spend however much it took. Kristela saved my daughter and I all those years ago in the desert. I could never refuse him entrusting his daughter to me. Mm, I mean, I guess. I don't really see how he saw Dia as his own daughter. <sighs> he was always like that. Acting like he's oh so smart and self-righteous. Kusela said that he'd reimburse me for a portion of Dia's fees. I refused to take any Mora from him, but he'd always send me funds anyway. Eventually, I just accepted them as a token of his gratitude. And that went on for a while until I received another letter from him a few years ago. The letter contained a request to help him buy food, weapons, medicine, and even explosive materials. Becoming more aggressive? I don't know, was it? Because the timeline's kind of, I'm kind of trying to follow along. That's right. When I started to hear some nasty rumors, I became wary. I wanted to meet him face to face to discuss things. So it's kind of like follow the timeline, but. Because he said he was super old. I guess he doesn't have to do it himself, but this must be a little bit beforehand. But by then. He was no longer receptive to my requests to talk. If I had to guess, it's probably because he doesn't want to put Dia at risk. But he made her a bodyguard. By that same token, he should have st also stopped talking to your... Stop asking for your materials. That thought occurred to me as well. I figured that he probably came to me uh, for help because he had nobody else to turn to. I after some deliberation, I decided to send him some food and medicine. I turned down all his requests for explosives and weaponry. Good thinking, good thinking. We should see uses attached to it to the point where he feels like, oh yeah, that's true, part of the family. Yeah. It's just kind of like jarring to hear, to hear him say that. But I guess after a while, he'd feel that way. I am aware that even such a reduced gesture of support could lead to others coming to harm, but I could not simply reject his plea for help. In the end, it probably was the wrong decision. I plugged my ears to the rumors and just chose a solution that made me feel least guilty about myself. Honestly, this is very understandable. If you can, please tell me where he is now. None of the things he's doing right now make any sense if he's just trying to keep me from getting tangled up in his world. If all he wants to do is steer clear of me, then maybe he shouldn't have brought me into this world in the first place. Oh. That's a heavy hitter right there. Oh. Golly, man. Poor Dia all the way around. Maybe you shouldn't have brought me in this world in the first place. Maybe you shouldn't have been fooling around. Oh no, Dia, please don't feel that way. I'm just angry because I can't wrap my head around any of his actions. Dang. Golly. This one's like, like real. It is another way of looking at... Maybe there's another way like looking at, uh, Maybe there's another way at looking at all of this. Can you try to believe in him? Just one more time. Mm. I don't think Dia can, but Shazam definitely can. Or Shazamat. Shazam. Another way? I don't know. I knew him and he was nothing more than a childish brute. I can't understand what's going through his head. Well, at this point, I think we need to talk to him. But I guess you do have a point. We haven't uncovered the whole truth yet. We still need to figure out his exact actions and reasoning for these last few years. I'll do my best to help. Of course, anything between the two of you would need to be resolved between you and him alone. Alone. 
I don't know Kusela's exact whereabouts. Outside of supplying his brigade with some goods, I, I tried my best to avoid getting involved any further with him. However, there's a man on the list named Jawed. He Jawed. used to be a mercenary in the desert and is now a member of the Core of Thirty. On to Jawed. C6 day gone. Poof. <laughs> oh. Talking about her father or, or high overs? Dang. Both. He's responsible for supplying weapons and liaising with the Dakan al Ahmar's merchant caravan. I think he should know Kusela's whereabouts. Oh. I've heard that he likes to have a few drinks alone and enjoy the cool wind at night outside the tavern. Maybe you'll be able to find him there. So we got to change the nighttime Thank and you, go sir. to the tavern. Then I guess this is bye for now, unless... I'll stay and be with my father here. To be honest, I'm still a little dazed and haven't finished processing everything quite yet. My father has indeed done something wrong, but if I think about it, I'm also not sure if there was a right way to handle this problem. True. Yeah, I, I feel know. like our only course of action is to turn everything we know over to the core of 30 and let them render judgment. Yes. I am prepared to accept whatever verdict they choose. It's time to face my mistakes. Y'all, no, I mean... I guess they, I guess that was kind of a mistake, but he didn't really know what he was getting into. To be fair. He didn't really know. But he definitely let emotions get the best of him. But I don't really seem like he was getting betrayed. It just kind of seemed like he was doing what he wanted to do. Or what he should have done. Come on, we can do it. Hmm. Wait till night time. It's kind of like an emotional exchange. I help you out, you help me out. Is he inside? Oh, there he is. <sighs> That's the good stuff. Nothing tastes better. Huh? Who are you guys? Don't worry about it. I know what you've been up to. Smuggling weapons to violent brigades in the desert while working for the Corps. <laughs> Pretty bold, if you ask me. Well, we should be kind of on the nicer side, right? Or, no. Shh. Keep your voice down. How do you know all that? Come with me. We should take this elsewhere. I'll be happy to talk things over once we're somewhere private. Where we headed? This place should do. Oh, God. All right. Back to my question. How did you all know about me? How you know about me? Yeah, yeah. No, it really is. It really is a good quest. I like it so far. Don't worry about that for now. You know what kind of punishment you'll face once we report you to the core, I assume. Wait, wait, wait. There's no need to jump the gun. Let's talk this out. What are your terms? <laughs> Love this guy's voice. So what's in it for you anyway, Mora? What you mean? Uh, well... I was a little tight on money at the time, and Kusela took good care of me in the past. I waited in my mind, and I couldn't find a reason to turn the opportunity down. I wouldn't only be helping my benefactor, but I could also make some quick mora. Some quick mora. Let me tell you how it is. We're investigating Dakan al Akmar, and we're going to put an end to their operations. If you provide some help for us, then we might just put in a good word later to reduce the terms of your punishment. Just tell me where he hey, is. Hey, why don't we discuss this a little first? Listen, I made <laughs> quite a bit of more from my last run. You just give me a number, and I'm sure we can... Shut it. My patience is running out. You should know when a mercenary is after something other than money. All right, all right, sheesh. But you sheesh. gotta promise you'll put in some nice words for me later. <laughs> I hope this VA is, is great for this. Mustache Tepe. Uh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. 
They're always on the move. Here's the spot they were at the last time I made my delivery to the desert. Simmer with Tepe. Feel free to go have a look. I'm just telling you, though, it's not on me if they're not there anymore. Sure. And then you can forget about any nice words from us. Oof. Hey, come on. Now you're just being unreasonable. Really? And how do I know you're not leading us straight into a trap? Don't forget, you're the one with no bargaining chips. All right, I get it, I get it. Why don't you go take a look, and if they're not there anymore, I'll try to figure out something else for y'all. That ain't gonna cut it, G. <laughs> now that's more like it. Let's move. Oh, what? Okay. And as for you, try to stick around the city until we get back. You don't want us to call the folks from the core and have them drag you back to the city. No, he's gonna book it. He's gone. He's already gone. Just by luck. How did I get caught by her of all people? <laughs> uh, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Better not. Jawad. Are we going to the location? Hey, Jawad, look, here's a delusion. Do you want it? Don't make you feel alive. Oh, no. I'll make you buzzling with life. Grow, grow, grow. Surely. Oh, it's R. You'll be buzzling with life and excitement. Hmm. Seems like we're in luck. That should be their camp right up ahead. Let's go. We'll finally get to the bottom of this ourselves. Oh, man. So apparently it's really, really bad, whatever is the secret. I'm here to see Kusela. Tell him to get out here. Oh shoot. Oh, it's one of them. It's one of the members. Why are you here? Ticket tree. I'll protect us. It's what I've done. What a home home. Haven't you all done enough? Oh, it is the other two? Oh. So are you also Did you see? Stop us. Stay out of this. It's got nothing to do with you. Oh, what's got everything to do with me? Look alive. Look alive. I'm never gonna get Diaz burst up. <laughs> Also, don't I have like oh six more seconds? I guess I don't really feel like it does much, huh? Oh, I'm not okay. I'm dumb. Wasn't in it. Oh, they already did. No, oh, she she's so strong. Oh gosh. <laughs> Enough fighting. We all know each other, and I don't want to take things too far. Just bring Kusela to me. There's no use hiding him anymore. Uh, if he's dead. Did you understand a single word I just said? Or do I need to bash your skull in some more? <laughs> he's dead, isn't he? All right, everyone. Let's all just calm down for a second. Um, Dia, the boss can't come out and see you anymore. He died a long time ago. I knew he was going to say it. As soon as he looked down, I knew it. Oh my gosh, he can't catch a break. I knew it. Oh. I knew it. Cause she was, she said she left the brigade a long time ago, and I was just like, "He left it a long time ago, and he already had a cane." What? Oh my god, she cannot catch a break, man. Seems like you've been out of the loop for a while. Guess that's for the best, though. At least that's what the old man wanted. And everybody stopped talking to him, like uh. Dunya's dad's father stopped talking to him, so nobody would have known. When did he die? What happened to him? If Dia gets sentimental now, then... Oh. A few years ago, Kusela broke up Dakano Akmar and went to the Deshret's Relic's headquarters by himself. Oh, he, he ended it? So is that when you guys started acting 
breaking up? So he wasn't even a part of it anymore. We would prefer to call it taking revenge. Every last person in Deshret's relics must pay in blood for what they did. That's why they turned on each other. It was all motivated by revenge. <sighs> Let me start from the beginning. Dia, do you know how the head of the relics maintained order internally? Overwhelming strength and unquestionable authority? Those were a part of it, yes. But just those on their own weren't enough. They had another tool at their disposal. They called it a person's record. Regardless of whether they joined by their own will or were coerced, every person in Deshret's relics were forced to leave a record of themselves at headquarters. What do you mean, record? Whether it be their deepest sin, some unforgivable act, or their most immoral exploit, the record served both as a symbol of loyalty and the perfect material for blackmail. Oh, so kind of like put like a deal on the line. So you mean Kusawa thought there was no sitting in the records? That's precisely it. Every one of us have a record. Me, Bashar, Tikridi, and all the boys who grew up with Dia and ended up joining our ranks. But you, Dia, you were never asked to provide a record, were you? I, I never even knew this was a requirement. Well, she wasn't in the Deshret relics, though. You were probably the only person in all of Deshret's relics who didn't know about it. Is she in the, um, Blazing Beast? Ever since you were born, Boss had been trying to shield you from this organization's sinister rules. Not only that, but he also banned all of us from committing any nefarious acts. He said he'd take care of the dues we had to pay regularly to headquarters. But in the end, he was just an ordinary person. What could he do? So this was a situation where, you know, the father, you know, he, he did his dirt. By the end of the day, he still kind of had a, obviously, you know, a soft spot for his own daughter in some way, shape or form. But he wasn't open with it, so nobody knew, and of course Dia didn't know. He was forced to go to headquarters again and again to account for missed dues and incomplete records. He'd come up with all kinds of excuses and get beaten up as a result. Imagine a tear just comes down right here. We all knew he was doing that for you. He wanted to get you out of this world, no matter what it took. Oh yeah, the music. Let's see where this is going. And that's why he became a shell of himself and couldn't walk without a cane. Wait, but that doesn't make any sense. I didn't know about any of this, and I'd never seen him get injured or beaten. Well, of course he didn't. You never, never saw him. Because you were too young at the time. How would you ever tell between wounds from a beating and wounds from battle? When you left home after that final argument with him, he seemed to age by a decade overnight. Even his hair went gray. Wait, what? So, even the blazing beasts were... Yep. It was all his doing. Had he not arranged them to come to you, you probably would have been reduced to a pulp before you ever left the desert. I knew he was trying to, like... She kept saying... It was obvious. She kept on saying, Oh, he's not doing anything for me. He's not controlling my life. I, I knew he, he was behind the scenes. A few years ago, Boss said he needed to make another trip to headquarters. He was already pretty weak then, and we all assumed he was going to get beaten again. I suggested that he hand the role of leadership over to me, but he said there was no longer any need, since the Khan al-Ahmar would soon be no more. His words made no sense to me, but that night, we heard that a massive fire tore through headquarters and raised everyone's records to ash. Dang, he burned everyone's? Everyone gained their freedom that night. Many members fled, not just from our ranks, but from the other brigades as well. Are you telling me they put their records on a piece of paper? But how could we leave with a clear conscience? All of us who knew exactly what had happened. The boss can't have just died for nothing. Those heartless jerks at headquarters took him from us. I mean, they passively took him, took you, 
took him from you guys just from beating him up. From that point on, the sole purpose of Dakan al Ahmar became revenge. The big fire that boss started was quite a blow to headquarters strength. It's given us the opportunity to launch our attack. I don't think this is what uh, her father would want, though, to be honest. Even though we're outnumbered, we vowed to see our revenge through to the very end. I mean, how would they know? But I feel like they, he wouldn't want that to happen. But uh, Desperate's Relics hasn't been the only victims of revenge. True. There were people from headquarters who changed their names and went into hiding. Some fled to other brigades, and others escaped to the rainforest. But we won't let any of them escape our wrath. They'll all pay for what they've done. Revenge is not the answer, my friend. We've suffered plenty of losses as well. To keep going, we need an enormous amount of supplies. From food and medicine to weaponry and explosives. Yep. So, he was dead pretty much this whole time. That wasn't him at all. All we can do is exchange our loot for Mora, and then use that to get supplies. We forged Boss's handwriting and sent out many letters to his former friends. Thankfully, many people were willing to come to our aid. Yeah, he definitely would not have wanted that, man. Jeez Louise. What are you doing? Are you freaking, you messing him up after he's in his grave? That's not, no, you don't do that. That's messed up. Did this quest at midnight when 3.5 got released? I just skipped through the dialogue at this point. Didn't know what happened. How the watch was seem right explain what happened. <laughs> oh no. Good idea. Let's ignore that the guy sacrificed his life for our freedom and get revenge for his death instead. Exactly. Like what? We were also able to attract many mercenaries who shared our goal. We've endured unspeakable pain to win many impossible battles. Like ah. Uh... The Aramites, this, this is the second time they, they have been so aggravating. The whole, like, Raman situation with Dia and, you know, them not knowing the real truth and having to go through the whole, you know, uh, go into the um, underground just to understand the truth. And now this. This is even more, I don't know which one's worse. The last one or this one. Deshret's relics have become weaker and weaker, and now we finally have an opportunity to directly strike their headquarters. He gave you freedom, and you just basically went right back in. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what to say anymore. That should be Dia's line. Responding to violence with more violence will only cause more pain, exactly. And do you have any idea the amount of damage you've done? Ugh. <laughs> We do know right from wrong, but we were sinners from the very beginning. We do not deserve the freedom that the boss won for us with his what? life. Boss always loved his old-fashioned hero stories. Those tales about sacrificing yourself to save the world. Oh my goodness. I must get more aggravated than danger. Sure. Gotta hit him up with the cutscene again. Actually, yeah. Oh, about two or three more times. I mean, I get, uh, I don't know. They feel like they're still, they still feel guilty and they want to, like, you know, not go about it how he wanted them to, but, like, at least honor the man's death. We used to always laugh at him for it. But in the end, he really went and lived those stories out himself. Dang. As for me, I never considered myself a hero. We're all the lowest of the low. We have no right to even imagine such an existence. But maybe those hero stories he liked foreshadowed everything that was to come. The spirit of the hero touched all those he had saved, and more and more people joined his cause. Yeah, but don't ruin it, though. You ruined it. Maybe we were all just acting along with the play in the beginning. But as we acted the parts and recited the lines, we were drawn in. And now, we want to see the story through to the end. Story's over. The story ended when he died. I'm sorry, dear. I know you always found us insufferable ever since you were young. Just think of this as a madman ranting. 
Dang. So everything about her father was actually true besides the violent part. I mean... Damn. Dia just can't catch a break, man. Come on. We're the lowest of the low. Please stop by <laughs> I'll go with you. Huh? Dia? You wanna go with them? Huh? I grew up with these guys, and I know they're not bad people. It's just that some situations get so bad that it's difficult to tell good from evil. I mean, I can tell they are conf conflicted, but... Uh. All I know is that Deshret's relics must be destroyed. Furthermore, I want to go see the place for myself. I want to know if my father is still there. I know you don't want to get involved in this, so there's no need for you to tag along. I can do this on my own. Alright, see you later. No. Mind your son, Dia. I made a promise to doing your dad. I support you. Yeah. Paimon feels like we'd only regret it if we don't see this through to the end. <sighs> Thank you. We'll be a lot stronger together with you. <laughs> I bet Boss would lose his mind if he ever knew you'd join us at the very last moment like this. Oh, uh, what the hell he would. Considering all the losses and injuries we sustained, we can't afford to turn down someone as powerful as you. He can think whatever he wants. But the fact is, I owe him this much. Oh. Oh. Mm. Golly. Well, I'll be honest, Dia kind of stomached that pretty, pretty well, all things considered. I guess it all comes down to this. Oh, my son. My son. Tishrite's relics are about to become history. I wonder if anybody else knew about the relics. This way a little. Besides them? Oh, everybody else, everybody's gone. Oh, what a bummer. I just had to get injured now, right before the final fight. Oh, sorry. Be sure <laughs> that was to us. one of them for me, huh? You got it. I'll be, I'll be, you know what? Mirza, I'll remember that. I will, I will punch one. I guess it just for you. comes down to this. I will punch one just for you if I get my burst up. This Pantrix? We sure didn't run into much trouble on the way here. Should be. I don't think they have enough manpower left to post guards and defend their perimeters. Where is this at? Ooh. Oh, yeah, we're, like, right at the edge. Interesting. Led by uh, Kusawa's old comrades, you arrive at the final hideout of Deshret's relics. Fierce resistance is about to be expected, or is to be expected within, but, it's, but it is time to call it curtains for vengeance, whether old or new. Yep, and a bunch of Aramites. Oh, boy. <sighs> Oh, you know what? I think... Is Dia going to be as a trial? Yeah, she probably will be, huh? She probably will be. Or at least I hope she is. Sounds good to me. Um, that should do. Yeah, I think it'll be a trial, Dia. If not, I could always just come back. Do, do. Recommended element, the element of surprise. Secret. Wow. Paimon didn't expect Look at to this go crew. Like this on the inside. A whole gang. They should all be holed up in here. Don't know how many people they've got left, though. Who cares? We'll round up all of them. Oh, uh, not Dia's mad, too. Still, we should be careful. Even if they've only got one shot left, it could still take us out. I don't know whether they'd be like more sad or mad in this situation. I fought there many situations like I fought in many situations like this before. Yeah, we'll know what they're really capable of once we've landed some hits on them. Deshret's relics may have been a force to be reckoned with before, but their name means nothing now. Sheesh! Look at this lighting. Yeah, they don't stand a chance with you here. I'll take the lead. I've been here once before. 
Oh, we're going. Is there any like secrets? Any chests anywhere? Nope. Dendro. Um. I guess uh, Jet is kind of on her own at the moment. I guess possibly she could ask to join any crew if they allow. If they allow it to. Okay, so we do have a trial. Yeah, that's good. Oh god, this is way too many slots. Delve into destiny. Out. Into the wind. Uh, there it is. Five. Do we need team slots? Oh wait, who's okay? There you go. <laughs> I see everything. Shadows of peace. Let's get it on. Got the cooldown still. On the long end. Oh, more of that gamer. Fate is upon you. As one with wind and cloud. Out. Voice. I punched one. <laughs> nice. This way. Follow me. We're almost there. Who? Her. I guess she's pushy she could actually. Wait. They went charging ahead without checking for any traps. Hey. You guys okay? It seems like we just got trapped in here. Don't think we triggered anything else. <laughs> Paimon, one second later. They just ran ahead without checking for any traps. Oh, looks like we got trapped. Watch out, the enemy's coming from ahead. Oh, hell. Well, now that things have come to this, seems we'll have to fight our way through. Don't worry about us. We knew something like this could happen. Go and take a look around. There could still be another way through. Let's go. We can't let the boss down. You already did. Let's check if there's another way. The sooner we can make it through to help them, the better. Let's see. I think I see a way through over there, but it's being blocked by something. Let's try our luck with that mechanism. Oh, no. Puzzles. Okay, let's go. Oh, God. It just got real. It just got sealed off? Wow. Oh, there is a way you can open again, though. Hmm. Why are these relics? I guess these are the shred relics. Just the height and color of the light so it may be properly received. Huh. Not bad. Whoa. Oh, I think this is like the, the cut the trailer. I wasn't expecting anyone to make it through from the other side. Michelle. But as a desert dweller, I suppose we should be used to our folks defying all expectations. Well, that's a desperate relic's leader. Don't waste your breath. You have nowhere to run. Run? <laughs> Had I wanted to run, I would have fled a thousand times already. I witnessed the golden age of Deshret's relics. Even if I could leave this place behind, all that awaits me now are endless days of humiliation and ruin. He's not wrong. Even now, my brothers and I still believe in one thing. The greatest should never live to remember their fall. So you want to go out in a blaze of glory? Let us draw our weapons! We will show them the true power King Deshret bestowed upon his followers. 
They are but two, while we hold within ourselves the entirety of the relic's glory. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't have the right indication on what that threat wanted either. Knowing the Aramites. Wave one, charge! Eliminate them! Wave one. This is a really good quest. I like this so far. It's like all what everything's mad and I see everything. Dia's whole story, Dia's dad. Also the fighting and the domain. Let's get it on! I'll be back. Uh-oh. One with nature. Don't think that you've won. You are We're just getting started. Let me scry. Will burn. Sprinting for two thousand. Committed to memory. King Deshret will not abandon okay, any one of his followers. <laughs> I shall. I shall. Ow. Take me out of the wind knows me. Will brothers, this is where we prove our faith. Do you all just want to die? Yes, none of us plan to leave this place alive. Like, literally, they literally want to die, they don't want to live. But we'll meet again. That is exactly what they want to do. They want to go out, blaze of glory. Into the ground. Oh, is it just him? No. Ow. The golden slumber. They literally do not want to see their own fall. The commander has finally fallen. He did? But they're still coming at us. This place is like a gladiator's ring. They just keep coming no matter how many we beat. Yes, keep fighting. There's no need to fear and no need to back down. This is our last stand! Were they just like sitting here waiting for this? When the next wave comes, try to draw away their attacks. I'm going to see if I can take out that high platform. Hmm. <laughs> that power walk. Get out of my way! That strong power walk. Come and face me, Michelle! That was the Walmart power walk. Uh, so they've broken through the front as well. Oh, wait, uh, wait, what? Apologies, Lord Michal. They just, they fight like absolute madmen. No matter how much we throw at them, they just keep coming for more. Oh, good job, I did it. I thought they were gonna get trapped in that little room. Oh, I did a good job, they actually made it. For a second, I didn't realize that was, that was our crew for a second. Good job, boys. <laughs> I was like waiting for like the punching and kicking sounds. That guy is a ditch. So it would seem like this is the end. Well, yeah, I mean, you wanted this. Time to pay for everything you've done, Michel. Why is he sentimental about it? <laughs> You think I would give you that opportunity? Oh my, this guy is like... I will be buried in the sand alongside all the rest of our fading glory. Make up your mind. He's like, oh, I guess this is the end. And then he's like, no, I will let you have that opportunity. <laughs> I don't wait, know what... Wait! What did he do? Wait, was that him? We were too late. Did he bite his tongue too? It's over. There's no more need to fight. But if you're still going to cling on to your so-called mercenary's pride, then I'll give you all a good beating as well. What just happened to him? <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, dear! I found the mechanism. I'll get you all back up here right away. Did he take himself out too? I guess he really was about what he said. Let's go.
What in the world? I cannot understand the thought process of these Aramites. I really, I really cannot. So I gotta find out what the heck he just did to himself. Who are you filthy rats? And why are you always pestering us? <laughs> you call yourself a member of the infamous Deshret's relics and you still can't even tell who's made it all the way to your headquarters? That, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Who knows what intent a bunch of rats may have. We try to catch a couple, and you all just show up on the other side instead. How are we supposed to figure out what you're after? Hey, have you ever heard of a man by the name of Kusela? <laughs> Why would I know? It's not like I'm in charge or anything. I, I just work here, you know. This is your last chance to talk. I don't know anything. H hey, I, I said I don't know anything. I'm just an average member here. I'm telling the truth. If you're here to find someone, why don't you look through the records yourselves? Who can remember every name and face with so many people coming in and out every day? The irony. His life became a light for so many, yet to others, it wasn't even worth remembering. Where's the records room? Answer me! It's right over there. All the files are in there. You can go through them as much as you want. It's not like any of them still matter anyway. This guy is asking for it. I mean the old records room. The, the old no, records room? Another point. You mean the one that got burned down? Kusela. Ah, yeah, I remember him now. The guy who could hardly walk. Oh, come on. Watch your mouth. That's our boss you're talking about. Yeah. He was definitely faking it. We all let our guard down as soon as we saw him come hobbling in. Wait, oh, oh. But in the short time it supposedly took him to take a dump, he'd already gotten away and started a fire in the records room. <laughs> I mean, I don't, he didn't, he doesn't need to fake it to set a fire. He what? couldn't have possibly outrun us if he wasn't a fraud. And after that, Deshret's relics fell into complete disarray. Is he still alive? Stop wasting our time. Every one of us here is perfectly aware of what he had done. Tell me, where is the old records room? It's just over there. Go see it for yourself if it means that much to you. There's nothing left in there but ashes. No human could ever survive that kind of inferno. Bashar, Tikriti, let's go. Hmm. We'll leave the others here to guard these guys. Spare them no mercy if they try anything. You said it like... Hmm. You said like it wasn't the full truth. Everyone hold hands. Ah, crazy. Every last one of them. Ah, I've already told you everything I know. Can't you just leave me alone? <laughs> if he's still alive, that'd be the biggest turnaround ever. I highly doubt it though. The sky just gone. Shadows of fate. Whoops. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> they actually took him out for real. He's no longer alive. Time to go. He did not make it. They beat him to a pulp. See if there's anything so, left. This was his final destination. How did he do it? Getting past all the guards with a limp and sneaking in here to start a fire? If he was nimble enough to do that, then he must have been able to get out of here after starting the fire, right? Oh, Dia, don't say that. Don't make that face. Dia. I'm sorry. I know it's just wishful thinking. Let's look around. Maybe we can find something that's been left behind. Hmm. Hmm? The heck is that? Is this a cane? Oh. It must be the one that Dia's father used. Kusela. Thanks for everything, boss. Dang. We're fortunate to somehow find that cane after that fire. What was that cane made out of? Let's split up and look around some more. 
What if something else has been left behind? But what else could survive a fire like that? Huh? Oh, what's he found? That's how he made it. It was a fake. Not so. Wait, isn't that the toy sword you played with as a child? <clears throat> the dragon oh. is no more, for Princess Dia has slain it. Its Dia. head now hangs above the city gates. Her bravery has brought eternal peace and prosperity to us all. Oh my God! This is the most important mine. Um. Um, you can do it. Oh, you defeated the dragon. Everyone's waiting for your speech. <laughs> <laughs> Still too shy, huh? All right, I'll do it. I hereby proclaim this is our awful. victory. Evil shall plague us no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like I should remember that at that age. I hereby proclaim our victory. Oh. Evil shall plague us no more, Dad. That caught me off guard too, because it, it, it went right into the cutscene so seamlessly. I didn't even think it was a cutscene. Golly, man. I need to read that. Shoot. What's this? I'll I'll go back and the save that later. Read that. That's so sad, man. Dang, everything that her dad was talking about was actually true. Like the stories, and he actually went to live it through. Oh, golly. But this one was, um, oh, it's not over yet, but like that scene, like a little Dia. Oh, <laughs> all on Paimon's death. <laughs> Don't you remember? You asked Paimon what she would do if she were to wake up tomorrow with loads of money. Wait, uh, hold on. How do we just jump from that last scene? What? I guess I had to read it, the thing. And Paimon said that she would get boatloads of tasty snacks. You looked super confused at the time, but said it was an adorable thing to say. These opportunities don't come by often. So today, Paimon's gonna treat you to a special crash course on Paimon's life philosophy. What? Where'd you get this money from? She really spends her allowance on other people? It's really my treat? Okay, there you go. Hey! This way you get something from the both of us for the price of one. Anyway, the point is that you should eat to your heart's content. You'll feel better for sure once you've gotten something in your tummy. Junior Zad will also be here shortly. She's already heard that we're back. I feel like we'd eat, uh, I don't know. I feel like there were still more things that might be fine there. I don't know. Aw, thanks, you two. Honestly, this is very unlike me. I just had a lot on my mind on our way back, so I didn't know what to say. My chest was filled with all kinds of intense emotions. They just shook me even more than all the feelings we've shared during our previous adventures. Oh. But when everything came to an end, those emotions also vanished without a trace. And I was left feeling more empty than ever before. It was as if I'd lost the thing that was most important to me. Mmm. It's... Uh... I don't know. It is like it is sad, but like to think how her attitude was beforehand and how it is now, it's such a jump, you know. Like I, it's understandable not she knows what happened, but this is why communication is key. Everything just happens so fast. Yeah, you're right. To many mercenaries, Mora is the most important thing in the world, but perhaps to us, it's the most worthless thing of all. Idrisi and the others all used to say that 
They would quit if there was no Mora to be had. But when it came to avenging my father, there was no Mora to be made anywhere. True. My reality shattered when I found out that the father who always told me hero stories was in fact a bad guy. But look at me now. Am I any different? That's what I was saying too. Like I, I thought he was trying to keep her out of the Aramite business as a whole. But then she ended up being an Aramite anyways. Despite all my promises about never forgiving him and never trying to understand him, I still went to such lengths to find out the truth and nearly even shed tears for his sake. We're hypocrites, all of us. <laughs> you should never question your true feelings, huh? Yeah, you're right. It's just a pity that we often only recognize our true feelings after it's already too late. That is absolute fact. You're back! Are all of you all right? No, more or less. Ah, there she is! Yeah. Many people from the Core of 30 came over, and I just wrapped up everything with my dad. All I can do now is wait for their verdict. Where's uh, J-Wad? <laughs> huh? Dia, you're looking quite down again. Paima will explain. A lot happened while we were gone. Paima explains. Oh, she has to cry too. Damn. I really should have controlled my emotions better. I, I just... I it's all right, my lady. You were hurt by all of this as well. Truth be told, I'm starting to feel a little guilty watching you cry like this. Dia, now your pain must be even worse. You shouldn't need to comfort me. Hey, don't worry about me. If anything, this whole thing has finally shown me the difference between illusion and reality. Yeah, I mean... The problem was that everybody kept secrets. My father probably thought that people could settle into new lives as long as they moved to a new environment. That thought has even crossed my mind a few times. It's like saying, what's wrong with adapting to a new life? However, there was always something deep within my mind that refused to accept it. This impulse brought me great turmoil. And even made me feel ashamed for turning my back on your father's kindness. Yep, depression impact indeed. Oh, even on her father's kindness? But now that I consider it again, it all makes sense. The desert sands are a part of who I am. And I will never be able to lead a peaceful existence. God, now you sound like them. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. I understand how you feel. But, yeah, I'm with the news out there. I, I get it, but... That doesn't mean I won't be making any changes to my life, though. As an example, I'm now thinking about taking on some small odd jobs. There you go. There's a start. It's just like Idrisi said. I also want to catch up to my father and become a character in his play. Even if the ending of the story may be childish and ridiculous, it won't really matter. Let's hope it's a happy ending. Isn't that neat, though? Oh, you'll be a whole new kind of mercenary. One that's not out for Mora. Dang, and all her lines were about Mora. All her, like, dialogue was about Mora. You know? She was all about Mora before... Before we, when she was a nice little playable character. It was always anything for the Mora. Why don't we go for a change of scenery once we finish eating? Uh, what about stopping by the Grand Bazaar again? Right. You said you wanted to get a rug for your family. We'll come along too. It's always more fun when everyone's together. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for taking care of me this entire time. Go to the Grand Bazaar to clear your head. Man, this was such a good quest. So there's still more to go, but. Man, golly. I always know how to make it sad. But it's not just like aimlessly sad though. It's like, it makes sense. Oh. Dia just can't catch a break, man. She just can't catch a break. No matter what. 
lore wise, gameplay wise, story wise. I might have went the wrong way, by the way. But we're headed in the right direction. Gonna go buy a rug. Oh, this rug here is quite something. The craftsmanship is exquisite, and the fabric is also of high quality. Ah, here you are. Finally, I found you. What? This is the guy who bit his tongue. Hey! Uh, aren't you that mercenary who bit his tongue? <laughs> you can still talk? Wait, are you here to take revenge on us? <laughs> what are you talking about? Do I look like his I can take you all to a fight? I just came here to give you something. I'll be on my way to give myself up to the core after this. That is too funny. They actually kept it. They actually made it make sense. That, I love that. That's awesome. That's actually awesome. Once I woke up, I hurried <laughs> to the Khan al Ahmar's camp, hoping to alert them to your presence. Bro, well, this quest just gets better and better. But when I got there, I found no one except the members who were still too injured to move. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Ah, so you probably got there after us. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they told me that they had exacted their revenge, and everyone had turned themselves into the authorities. Even that last camp was not going to last for much longer. Jesus. I had joined the cause to repay an old favor from Kusela. Now that everyone's already turned themselves in, I might as well do the same. I mean, hey, at least it makes sense. Kind of sounds a little too good to be true. One of the injured members gave this box to me <laughs> and told me that it contained some of the old man's last possessions. Everything left in the camp will get confiscated, so I figured I should get this to you before the core could get their hands on it. Thank you. To be fair, we didn't do anything to him. All right, that was he did that to himself. No worries. We are all just living our own truths. There's no need to comment or judge anyone for it. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, this but this box contains everything that Dia's father left behind. Huh? It feels lighter than expected. Well, back in the day, the first thing he did with any Mora was spend it on things like drinks and meat. But let's see what's inside. Hopefully it's a buff. Wh what's this? It's just a bunch of junk. It, ugh, it kind of stinks. <laughs> uh, perhaps it's just been left unopened for too long. It's a broken mirror. Oh, no. Hmm. A handwritten copy of a storybook. The paper's already yellowed, and it looks like it's about to fall apart. It was against the Academia's rules to possess books for personal use. <sighs> if he was going to break that rule, he could have at least copied something useful. Is it really against the Academia rules to have a book for yourself? What the heck? One second. That probably means this was really important to him. You can't have your own book? Ah, and here are a few bags of children's snacks. The packaging's completely deteriorated. Maybe that's where the smell was coming from. Did he get those for you? Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Even when I was a child, I was never a fan of these kinds of snacks. He'd always say that he got them for me, but in the end... He always ate more than I ever did. Well, definitely don't eat it now. Who even leaves snacks in a box like this anyway? Isn't that just common sense? <laughs> <sighs> Forget it. Let me see what else is in here. Mm, a razor, some buttons, some round iron tiles, a wooden toy puppet, a wool scarf, which from the looks of it probably belonged to a woman, and a hair clip? <laughs> Why are these things here? Did you say it's like... Uh, I, I, I... I'm uh, suddenly feeling a little scared. I'm sorry, my lady. But this is just the kind of man he was. He probably saw this box as some kind of personal trash heap and dumped any and everything in there. All right, well, now these are going back to normal. One, no. Two empty liquor bottles. Ugh. 
tell me, you guys, are these the kinds of things that a normal person would leave behind? How did all that stuff fit in that tiny little box? Probably not. What an interesting man. Huh? There's something in the bottle. It's a message in a bottle? Oh, you're right. Uh, all right, I got it out. It seems to be a piece of paper with some writing on it. The bottom part's all damaged from moisture, though. Let's hope the writing didn't smudge. <clears throat> oh boy, here we go. Get ready for the saddest note you've ever heard. I was suddenly seized with an urge to write a letter after finishing this bottle. I just folded it up and left it in the bottle, though. If I end up forgetting about it, it won't really matter. To Dia. <gasps> it's a letter for me? You need to read it out loud. It's all right. I'll just read it out. If he went to the trouble of writing a letter, there must have been some important things that he wanted to say. Or at least record down. Hmm. I had a razor fit in the box. My condition's becoming worse and worse. Can't even walk without a cane anymore. Much less go out and have fun. Guess I don't have many days left. If you're reading this letter, then I suppose I'm already long gone. You were adorable as a baby. Everyone loved you. And regardless of whether you were crying or laughing, everyone enjoyed having you in the group. Oh. But once you grew a bit older, you were no longer nearly as happy or cute. It's okay. It's probably uh -huh. Andresi's fault. <laughs> he was never up to any good. <laughs> can you believe this guy? He can point the finger at himself. Anyway, back to the point. Oh. To summarize, I'm writing this so you would know not to feel sad for me, even if you end up finding out the truth. Call them ugly. The reason being that... <laughs> I was never your father to begin with. Wait, what? By mind, you stole my words. Surely, uh, he must be joking, right? Who on I, earth? I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I was quite formidable when I was young, and a hundred times cooler than some so-called flame main. <laughs> really felt like the whole world was under my feet. With just a teeny tiny bit of effort, I felt I could rule over the entire desert. But as fate would have it, I went out into the desert for a drink one day, and discovered a baby in the sands. It was you. What? Oh my god, it's Nahida all over again. She was in a baby carriage. You were just lying there, small and helpless. You were so tiny that if the wind blew for just a little while longer, you would have been buried forever. So who was the father? But your cries were so loud, they made my head hurt. <laughs> now that I think of it, you really were a bundle of energy. Uh... Sounds like he's serious. I told Idrisi and the others that I had slipped up with a woman while out and about. <laughs> None of them even doubted me. Dang, yeah. I mean, I kind of believe that too when Dia was talking about him. I'm sorry that I had to lie to them for so long, but I really had no other choice. I mean, would they have really shut him down if he said, if he told the truth? I was their most esteemed leader after all. It's not like I did just tell them that I suddenly wanted to play at being a father. <laughs> ah, at this rate, I'll puke up all the liquor I just drank from this bottle. <laughs> anyway, dear, you possess the kind of freedom and kindness that we could only dream of. As far as how you should live your life, that'll be up to you to decide. Wow, so it wasn't even... So they don't know her mother or her father. That's the end of the letter. In the end, he was still thinking of me as a little child. Dang, isn't that good? Isn't that a good thing? I mean, yeah, glad somebody found her. I suppose, or I would have suffocated under the sand a long time ago. He was a good father to you. The fact that he wasn't a blood relative doesn't change that. I mean, I'd argue that was probably even better. Because he didn't have to do that. Yeah. 
It's just a pity that we had to learn the truth of everything like this. Do you already have some ideas about the decision that he wanted you to make? I do. If he first found me alone in the sands, then I want to try my hand at finding the person who abandoned me. I just have one wish. To tell them a story. That there once existed a childish and foolish jerk with a heart of gold. And that only under his care was I able to grow and mature into the person I am today. Oh. We need a, we need a part two. If you end up finding any leads, can you share them with us? We go on adventures all the time. Maybe we'll be able to find some information for you. <sighs> sure, I appreciate it. I wasn't expecting you to be so enthusiastic. Also, I don't want to see his efforts go to waste. I don't want you to stop going forward. I'll help too. Thank you. All of you. Thank you so much. The classic music. My life has certainly had its twists and turns, but I've always considered myself lucky. Because no matter where I've gone, I've always been surrounded by incredible kindness. Well, that is a round of applause from me. That was probably my favorite quest. See that dog? <laughs> That's probably my favorite quest uh, to date right now. If I, if, I had to, if I had to pick one. That was definitely my favorite one. That was just like so good all around. From start to finish, it didn't like have like a like slow start and then like that but it's fine if it does but like yeah that was just good all the way around i just thoroughly enjoyed that one everything was you know explained for you to think one way of, of her father but as you went along on the quest you learned it was pretty much always the opposite like oh he was this he was that he was this he was that but in reality he was actually a good dude and also wasn't even a real father <laughs> So everything that you thought was the case wasn't even the case. So, but like the thing about Diaz, why I like it so much is because it was actually mostly about her, and like to the point where it felt like a Diaz story it quest. Like it felt like it was her. But yeah, I like how it focused on her and her family and pretty much everything to do with Dia, the Homiani family, Dunya's dad. Um, which is like what she's all about, and then her, her own family as well, which My is not even her real family. Like, I, I don't think the other ones were bad per se at all, like at all, but, um, you know, it's just like you're playing a story quest of that character, and it's like sometimes you kind of deviate to an NPC quest, yeah, you know. But that was fun. Uh, that was, yeah, that was about like, I'd say, probably took me like two hours. I think it's like an hour and 30 minute quest. But, yeah, that was good. That was my fave. 